Okay, so with this final algorithm, um, we'll be able to finish the, the solve for the cube. Um, there are several possibilities about how things might be oriented. If you look at the edges, I actually have one edge that's correct, and then I have three edges that are incorrect. So there are only a couple possibilities. Number one is all the edges are correct, and of course then you're done solving the cube, there's nothing to do. Um, you may find that there are three edges that are incorrect, as I have, and then one edge which is correct, or there are two other possibilities in which none of the edges are correct, and the two possibilities are that the two edges are flipped opposite, so this for example would be red, because red is the opposite, the opposite centerpiece. So the red and orange have flipped, and the blue and green have flipped, or it can be kitty corner to each other. So in that case, the um, orange and the green would be flipped, would be switched with each other, and the red and the blue would be switched to each other, for example. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do one algorithm that will handle all those situations, but you may have to repeat it more than once. You should never have to repeat it more than twice, however. And the way that algorithm basically works is, I'm going to face the um, the good side, so this is, the orange is good, I don't need to do anything with that, I'm going to face it away from me. So that leaves my three pieces that need to make the flip, it's going to be a three-way rotation, and I need this piece, this piece, and this piece to rotate with each other, and then they'll all be in place and, and the solve will be over. What's going to determine whether I do the right-hand version of this, or whether I do the left-hand version of this is, which of the pieces is in its opposite position. So in this case, if you look, the, the green piece is in its opposite position because opposite from the blue center is the, the green center. If you look at the other side, this piece is not on the opposite. This piece needs to move over to here. The red needs to move over to here. The blue needs to move over to here, but the green one needs to slide all the way over across to the opposite. So that's what's going to determine which side I do this algorithm on. Whichever of the edge pieces needs to move opposite, that's the side that I'll do it. So in this case, the green one is the one that needs to move to the opposite. I'm going to do it on the right. This is going to be a lot of rotating of the, um, of the side and the top, and there's kind of a, a rhythmic pattern to it. So you really want to just pay attention to that pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the left side away and I'm going to turn the top side. So what I'm thinking about is the pieces that are up here. Are they going away from me or are they going towards me? So I'm going to move this piece away and away. Now I'm going to turn this, continue to turn this in the same direction, but I'm going to go backwards, go up and backwards. And on the last one, I'm going to go up and I'm going to go away again. Okay, if you just look right now, you can kind of see how pieces will come back together. These blue pieces will pull back and line up. These blue pieces will come over and line up. And this piece will come around like this. And the solve is done. Now you can do it on the right side also. So I can turn it up and away. Up, against, up, against, up, away. And now you can see how the pieces will line up again. The green will come back here and line up. I can move these green over here and line up, and I can flip these guys around. Now in this case, because I already had everything solved, I just mixed it up. So repeating the pattern, this one is on the opposite side, so I'm going to go up and away, up and against, up and against, up and away. Okay, and then there's three last moves to finish it. I'm going to pull that side back to me to line these guys up. I'm going to move these guys over to their correct side. I'm going to pull this guy um, down. Now there's a possibility, again, that the pieces across here will need to be switched or the pieces kitty corner. And in that situation, you want to do the algorithm twice. It's just like it was for the corner swaps. You can just arbitrarily do it in any orientation and at least one of the edges will get fixed. And then that'll leave three edges that need to be, the, need to be rotated and you'll do the algorithm again. I'll show two more algorithms that you can use for handling those situations in a single algorithm. But um, honestly, the um, algorithm that does the three-way rotation is, is a really quick algorithm. It's, it's relatively easy to do. Um, and so, you know, you can just repeat it twice. That may be just as fast as doing the other algorithms. Um, particularly the kitty corner algorithm is it's a little complicated. So um, you may just want to repeat the, the three-way switch on any one of those so that you don't have to... Um, to do these a little more complicated algorithms for the um, across from each other and the kitty corner situation. So that's it. You do the three-way rotation and the cube is solved and you now can solve the Rubik's Cube.